Greetings, TCNJ. My name is Ben Bisignaro, and I will be your moderator for this LTV special today. We have the presidents of the Republican Club and the Democrat Club here on campus discussing their party stance on some of the most pressing issues for the upcoming election. I am obligated to inform you that the club presidents were given the topics ahead of time and the responses have been prepared for this special. Each president will have about a minute and 30 seconds to state their party stance. The opinions and stances on the subjects are not the same as of the school. They are solely the stances of each political party written by students and do not reflect any opinions of the college itself. We will begin with our first topic of inflation. President of the Democrat Club, you may begin your response. There is a minute and 30 on the clock and it will begin once you start speaking. Hi everyone, my name is Arya Shalilai and I am the president of the TCNJ Democrats Club. Thank you so much to Lions TV for inviting us here today and thank you to the Republicans for debating with us. I'll begin by talking about Kamala Harris's stance on inflation. While inflation has cooled to nearly pre-pandemic levels, prices have risen 21% since the start of the pandemic. Many middle-income families are still falling behind their cost of living. Harris blames price gouging by food suppliers and grocery chains for these high prices at the store and wants to primarily take this means of lowering prices. As Attorney General of California, she took on big banks and plans to take a similar approach in her time as president by cracking down on anti-competitive prices that let big corporations jack up prices and undermine the competition that allows businesses to thrive all while keeping prices low for consumers. As president of the US, Kamala Harris will keep things affordable for families and for people across the nation. All right, now we will turn over the issue to the president of the Republican Club. Your time will start once you begin. Hello everyone, my name is John Ranzia, chairman for the TCNJ College Republicans. On the issue of inflation, Americans are paying more now than ever before. And this is seen especially in our lower and middle classes where they are truly feeling the price of this inflation. For example, the average price of groceries for a family of four has skyrocketed from $150 a week under Trump to around $300 per week under Biden for the same stuff. Furthermore, the prices of gas has risen from around $1.50 up to $3.50 per gallon. And for those of us in college, it has been estimated the cost of higher education has gone between 5 and 10% within the last five years. While these numbers may sound small on camera, the fact remains that a 5 to 10% increase for the average tuition of $100,000 is an extra $10,000 in student debt. That's enough to buy a used car. And let's face it, a lot of people here are paying a whole lot more than $100,000. On the flip side of things, Trump has promised to drastically cut taxes for all Americans. He has promised to create a high paying job for lower and middle class Americans, and he has also sworn to use the Federal Reserves to bring prices down to similar levels that we experienced not even four years ago, which will freshen up our economy and will truly solve this issue that we're seeing in front of us right now. Now we will move on to the next topic of immigration. President of the Republican Club, you will start for this topic. And once again, your time will begin when you start. Sounds good, thank you, Ben. So we as Republicans are fully supportive of safe and legal immigration. After all, at some point in time, we are all the descendants of immigrants. However, it is illegal immigration that we take a serious issue to, mainly due to the fact of the implications and ramifications of illegal immigration. For example, through illegal immigration, we are seeing substantial overcrowding. We are seeing rampant rates of violent crimes, and we are seeing thefts, robberies, and we are seeing a direct funneling into this ongoing drug crisis. We have reached a point where American citizens in Texas are being burdened by immigrants setting up encampments in the front lawns. We are at the point now where people in Nevada are being held hostage in their own apartments. We have seen violent crime soar to unprecedented rates in our large cities. And beyond this, we are seeing our home state of New Jersey, especially in Trenton, seeing drug-related deaths and homelessness reach all-time highs. So under Donald Trump, he has promised to mobilize ICE. He has promised to resume construction of the border wall along our southern border. And he has promised, above all else, to clean up the streets of fentanyl and other crimes. In his first tenure, illegal immigration dropped historic lows, along with drug-related deaths. And I can promise you this. If he is to be reelected, I can ensure that those numbers will return to how they once were. Thank you. Now we will turn the topic over to the president of the Democrat Club. Uh, your time will begin once you start. Absolutely. The TCNJ Democrats and Democrats in general also agree with having safe and legal immigration. We have to remember that we're all sons and daughters, uncles, aunts, cousins, friends of people who immigrated to this country. 
and we must support them and f future immigrants in their endeavors. That's why Kamala Harris works to determine the root causes of immigration. Her work has resulted in historic investments from American businesses in the northern part of Central America. And the number of immigrants coming from the region has greatly diminished between, bis, excuse me, since she began her work. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have worked with Republican members of Congress on a bill to address border security in ways that have been endorsed by the Nor uh, National Border Patrol. Kamala Harris specifically supports pathways to citizenship, building a better way for people to come here safely and legally. And that's why she, if elected as president, will grant ICE with an additional $8 billion of funding to make this happen. She also wants to help immigrants get permanent residence in the United States, especially those who are foreign nationals of Afghanistan and other countries in which they may have been displaced. That's why Kamala Harris prioritizes safe and legal immigration in this country. Now we will move on to the next topic of discussion, which is health care. Uh, Democrat Club, you will start on this topic, and once again, your time will begin once you start. Absolutely. One of Kamala Harris's main goals is to lower the cost of prescription drugs, which she has played a role in through her tie-breaking vote for the Inflation Reduction Act. As vice president, she took on Big Pharma to lower drug price, excuse me, to lower drug prices and plans on capping insulin costs at $35 for all Americans. This is a necessary change. When it comes to Medicare, Kamala Harris has also prioritized its protect protection and hopes to expand the program, for example, with its coverage and access to mental health providers and make sure that every American has a right to health care, whether physical health care or mental health care. The Biden-Harris administration reversed many of the changes enacted by the Trump administration with the Affordable Care Act, specifically Obamacare, for example, by restoring the outreach and funding to the program. One of Harris's main health care plans for the upcoming year is to work to cancel medical debt for millions of Americans who currently face this burden, as well as removing the debt from their credit reports, which will allow Americans to improve their credit scores substantially and benefit 15 million Americans. Now it's time to turn the topic over to the Republican Club. Uh, your time begins once you start. Thank you, Ben. So contrary to popular belief, the Republican Party has always stood for effective and efficient health care for all Americans, regardless of income. After all, it was Donald Trump's initiatives during his tenure that ensured the prescription drug prices were cut to all-time lows. It was under Trump where he took action to ensure that health care be given to those with underlying health conditions. It was Donald Trump who took a stand to Big Pharma to end surprise medical billing, and it was Donald Trump who fixed Obamacare and ensured that the American people would pay for the med medical health that they need and not a dime more. It was also Donald Trump who strengthened association health plans, helping lower and middle class families. And it was Donald Trump who expanded health reimbursement agreements, allowing families to choose their health care and not be pigeonholed into the health care provider that their employers mandated. And while he and the party have not focused too much on this issue during the election cycle, I can ensure you that if he is to be reelected, we will see a lot of the similar procedures that occurred during his first tenure. Thank you. Now we will move to our second to last topic of discussion, which is abortion. Republican Club, you will start the discussion on this topic. Your time begins once you start. Thank you, Ben. So while we as Republicans are unapologetically pro-life, believing supporting life from inception until natural death, we also understand the value of small government, especially in terms of hot topic issues like abortion. As such, Trump has promised that he will not ban abortion outright like the mainstream media states. This has been seen through his overturning of Roe v. Wade, which places abortion legislation back into the hands of the local government and out of the hands of D.C. bureaucrats. Under Trump's policies, issues like this have been returned to the people, and their say was something that I believe we could all agree is better than women's rights being in the hands of a few politicians in D.C. So while myself and my opposition may have distinct and most likely adversarial views on this issue, I believe we can both agree that major decisions and massive legislative battles are best left to the people and to the states and should be ruled upon not by the House, the Senate, or the President, but by the people themselves. Thank you. Now we will turn the issue over to the Democrat Club. Uh, your time begins once you start. Thank you, Ben. I do agree that the decision should be left in the hands of the people, and that is why us Democrats are pro-choice. We leave the choice up to each individual woman, each individual family, to make the choice for themselves whether or not an abortion is the right decision for them. That is leaving it up to the hands of the people. Once again, the decision of whether to have an abortion is a deeply personal choice, and the government should not be interfering with this choice. 
every woman deserves the right to make a choice for themselves. The right to an abortion is more than just reproductive rights. It's about the broader right to privacy. It's about whether or not Republicans can strip women of this fundamental right. Harris aims to fight for abortion rights by codifying federal protections that existed under Roe versus Wade. Quote, Roe allowed for restrictions on abortion after fetal viability, which typically occurs between 23 and 25 weeks. Democrats have not had enough votes in Congress to pass such protections under Biden, end quote. If Kamala Harris is elected, she will make sure that Roe v. Wade is codified and that these rights are restored to women. This is also about the general conversation about fertility services and contraception, which also should be a right to all people across the United States, no matter your political party, no matter what state you live in, no matter who you choose to have a kid with or not. It should be up to you. Thank you. Now it is time to move to our final topic of discussion, which will be the topic of taxes. Democrat Club, you will begin this conversation. Uh, your time begins once you begin. Kamala Harris has backed a number of tax measures targeted at lowering economic inequalities and helping lower and middle class families and Americans. She has supported the extension of tax credits like the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit, as well as tax cuts for the middle class. A tax credit of up to $6,000 annually paid in monthly installments is exactly what Harris's LIFT Act is advocating for during her presidential campaign. She's also advocating for raising taxes on corporations and for the rich, as well as rolling back the tax breaks that have been given to major corporations and high income receivers that were implemented during the Trump administration. Her tax policies are largely in line with a progressive framework that aims to finance social welfare programs and create a more equitable tax structure overall. Kamala Harris is the candidate that will bring America forward and not backwards. And that's why we encourage you to go out and vote for Kamala Harris this election cycle. Thank you. Now we will turn the topic over to the Republican Club. Uh, time begins once you start. Thank you, Ben. As many of us have noticed, the current tax is eating away the earnings of all Americans. No matter your socioeconomic status, you've likely noticed the fact you're losing roughly 15% of your paycheck. To combat this, Donald Trump and the Republican Party have doubled down their beliefs of promoting tax cuts throughout all sectors. He has promised to slice corporate taxes so that one can run and manage their own business. He has promised to cut income tax so you can keep more of your paycheck. And he has promised to remove tax on tips for waiters and waitresses, an industry that many of us at TCNJ are very familiar with. If that is not enough, under Trump's last administration, we saw our economy reach new heights. And thanks to his tax cuts, which is something I'm sure we look forward to again, especially with Minnesota ending our higher education pursuits within the next four years. Thereby, through these policies and a second Trump tenure, we as Gen Z will finally find prosperity, and thereby America will be made great again. Thank you very much. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Make sure you get out there this election and vote. And hopefully this special was able to help you decide which candidate you want to vote for. The last day to register to vote is October 15th, and it can be done online, mail, or in person. Election Day is held on Tuesday, November 5th, so please plan accordingly so you get the chance to vote. My name is Ben Bizignaro, and I have been your moderator for this special. Us here at LTV hope to see you back on the channel in the future. Take care now.